If you didn't care <laughs> I'm Hannah, welcome to EV Unplugged. And that is enough of that. <laughs> Today's video is all about the 70s. And there's so many iconic things that happened in the 70s. One of them for sure was the Bond bug. Now, the Bond bug was produced only for about four years from 1970 to 1974. Bond Cars Limited was bought by Reliant in the 70s and that is when they snuck out this little design. Now they'd had this design on the back burner for quite some time. A guy called Tom Caron designed it and Tom Caron designed so many of the 70s icons. He designed Marble Run. He also designed the bulletproof Pope Mobile. He designed Luke Skywalker's Speeder and oh man he also designed the rally chopper so this was destined for great things before it was even born now another great thing about the bug is that it's small the whole thing about it was that it was meant to appeal to a young audience so you could actually drive this just on a motorbike license it was quite affordable it was small it was bright orange so it was all about attracting that young audience. But the flower power aspect was a little bit loose back in the 70s. Everybody was big on flower power, but it was super hard to achieve. Battersea Power Station, for example, was fueled by fossil fuels, and that kept running all the way through the 70s. However, we're here in 2022, flower power in a Bonberg is very much achievable. Wondering which of the brothers to blame And that is because this Bonberg is fully electric You didn't care What happened to me? 2,268 of these Bond bugs were made and there's a rich history in modifying them. People have put different engines in there, they've gone for different chassis, people have even made four-wheel Bond bugs. So it was only a matter of time before someone made an electric bug. We would zigzag our way through the boredom and pain, occasionally glancing up through the rain, wondering which of the brothers to blame. I bought one in 2017 and I restored that, um, and then once I sort of worked my way around it. I could start to see how it was going to incorporate the batteries and the motor and everything. So with my friend's London Electric Cars, who are just down the road in Lambeth, um, we worked out how to put the batteries into the chassis, their Tesla batteries, and then the motor drives exactly into the rear axle and it only takes up the same space that the gearbox used to take up. So everything else has now become available, so there's now actually more space in the car than there was. I had to change the um, back axle ratio, which was only from a particularly rare Reliant, and I managed to find a guy who had one in a pigsty in his garden. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the gears out and put them into the axle box, and it all works fine. I mean, it was a bit of a leap of faith. And this is the motor, it's tiny, mm -hmm. and it feeds straight into the back axle. Then we've got two batteries lying within the chassis, and one more just on top, below the boot floor. So we haven't really encroached on wow. any space at all. And we've actually gained some space here where the engine used to be. It's kind of a development car because um, I've, I've been on the London to Brighton electric 
vehicle rally and I've been out to shows and things like that and it's, it's, it's gone really, really well. And the range is about 100 miles? Yeah, um, on a good day, let's be fair, 80 miles is, is perfectly achievable. Where did you get the batteries from? So these are Tesla batteries. Yeah, they're repurposed from older write-offs really. It is a green issue. You don't have to recycle these batteries, you found another useful. You are recycling. Yes, <laughs> and recycling them long term rather than short term. And watching for pigs on the wing. There's always going to be naysayers, and I know that people get really opinionated about converting classic cars into electric. But you know what, for inner city driving, I think this works really, really well. There's no on and off the clutch. There's no great big petrol engine sat right in the cab alongside me. And that means I'm not getting too hot in here either. There's loads of advantages of this little bug being electric in the city of London. Now, I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching the video as much as I've enjoyed driving the bug. If you have, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. I'll see you next time.